Hi everyone. Welcome to the Chemical Engineering Process Design Learning Videos with Aspen Plus Software. This is our ninth video lesson. This video lesson provides you knowledge and skills on how to simulate detailed heat exchange design using Aspen Plus software. This is our example problem. A methanol vapor stream at 12,750 kilograms per hour is coming out at 95 degrees Celsius from a distillation column. It is required to design a countercurrent shell and tube heat exchanger in order to cool down this methanol stream up to 40 degrees Celsius in liquid state. Cold water at 25 degrees Celsius with a flow rate of 70 kilograms per second is available as the coolant. First, we need to use the shortcut method to estimate the basic heat exchange parameters. Then we need to extend our design using the detailed method to design the geometry of the heat exchanger. Based on the results, we need to propose a more suitable heat exchanger design for this application. It is a good habit to sketch the block flow diagram before starting to solve a design problem. According to the problem statement, hot methanol stream enters the heat exchanger at 95 degrees Celsius with a flow rate of 12,750 kilograms per hour. The methanol stream is in vapor state and it must be condensed and cooled down up to 40 degrees Celsius. The cooling water enters at 25 degrees Celsius with a flow rate of 70 kilograms per second. And the cold water outlet temperature is unknown. As engineers, we must make valid assumptions to solve the problems easily. Keep in mind that if you want to be a good engineer, you must develop good imagination skills. We can have these assumptions for this problem to make our calculations easy. Since we do not know any input data about the distillation column, it is not required to include it in our simulation. We can assume steady state conditions and no heat losses. As well, we can assume hot fluid flows in the shell. Let's take operating pressure is constant at 1 atm and methanol completely changes from vapor to liquid state. For the detailed design, let's take the heat exchanger material as copper alloy with 10% nickel. Before starting the simulation with Aspen Plus, let's have a look at the manual solution of this problem. First, using the shortcut method, we can find out the heat duty for this heat exchanger. For the heat duty, we need to account the latent heat of subcooling of methanol because initially methanol is in vapor state. So we can calculate the total heat duty is equal to 4345.6 kilowatt. Using the calculated heat duty, we can estimate the cold water outlet temperature is almost equal to 40 degrees Celsius as well. We can calculate the logarithmic mean temperature difference is equal to 30.8 degrees Celsius. In the manual detail design method, we need to first find out the temperature correction factor for LMTD. In order to find out the temperature correction factor, first we need to estimate the two correlations capital R and capital S. Using the given equations, we can calculate these correlations as capital R is equal to 3.67 and capital S is equal to 0.21. Using these values of correlations, we can find out the temperature correction factor is equal to 0.85. Therefore, we can find out the corrected logarithmic mean temperature difference is equal to 26.18. 
For this detailed heat exchanger design, let's assume one shell pass and two tube passes. In order to estimate total heat transfer area, first we select overall heat transfer coefficient for this heat exchanger as 0.6 kilowatts per square meter per degree Celsius. The overall heat transfer coefficients for each process liquids can be found out using the tables and charts. Using the selected overall heat transfer coefficient and the corrected LMTD value, we can estimate the total heat transfer area is equal to 276.65 square meters. For the tube design, let's select 20 mm outer diameter and 16 mm inner diameter, 4.88 meter long tubes. These tube sizes are coming from standard tube sizes available. This selected tube can be indicated as 3 quarter inch diameter and 16 feet long standard tube. For the tube sheet thickness, we can allow 50 millimeters. So we can take the total length as 4.83 meters. Using this selected tube sizing, we can calculate the area of one tube as 0.3035 square meters. Using the previously estimated total heat transfer area, we can estimate the total number of tubes required is equal to 912. Furthermore, we can decide the shell side fluid is pure methanol and it is relatively clean. We can take 1.25 triangular pitch for the tube arrangement. As we estimated the total number of tubes required, using the equation, we can find out the tube bundle diameter is approximately equal to 825 millimeters. We can select the shell type as split ring floating head type. This shell type should be selected based on our application. For the selected shell type, the tube bundle clearance can be found out using the chart. The tube bundle clearance can be taken as 70 millimeters. So the final shell diameter becomes 895 millimeters. However, the nearest standard pipe size is 914.4 millimeters, that is equal to 3 feet. Therefore, we can take the final shell diameter as 914.4 millimeters. In order to find out the corrected overall heat transfer coefficient based on the geometry of heat exchanger, First, we need to find out the tube side coefficient. We can find out the mean tube side temperature is equal to 32.5 degrees Celsius. The tube cross-sectional area is equal to 201 square millimeters. Since we have two tube passes, the number of tubes per pass is equal to 456. Therefore, the total flow area is 0.0917 square meters. Cold water is flowing through the tubes. Therefore, we can calculate the cold water mass velocity is equal to 763.36 kilograms per square meter per second. Since the density of water is 995 kilograms per cubic meter, cold water linear velocity can be calculated as 0.767 meters per second. These calculated parameters can be substituted to the equation to find out the inside fluid film coefficient for the tube side. We receive the tube side fluid film coefficient as 3902 watt per square meter per degree Celsius. Then we should calculate the shell side coefficient. Let's select five numbers of baffles. Generally, we select baffle spacing as one-fifth of the shell inside diameter. So we can obtain the baffle spacing as 179 millimeters. Select 25% tube pitch. So the distance between centers of two adjacent tubes becomes 25 millimeters. Cross flow area for the shell side fluid flow can be calculated as 0.032 square meters. 
The mass velocity or mass flux can be obtained by dividing shell side mass flow rate by the cross flow area. We receive the answer as 110.68 kilograms per second per square meter. As well, we can find the equivalent diameter required for the calculation of Reynolds number for the shell side using the given equation. The equivalent diameter becomes 14.2 millimeters. Average shell side temperature is 67.5 degrees Celsius. Take the density of methanol as 750 kilograms per cubic meter, viscosity as 0.34 millinewton second per square meter, thermal conductivity of methanol as 0.19 watt per meter per degree Celsius. Using all these parameters, we can find out the shell side Reynolds number as 4622.5 and Prandtl number as 5.1. Let's neglect the viscosity correction for the shell side coefficient as methanol is a low viscose liquid. Let's select 25% buffer cut. Therefore, using the graph and the calculated Reynolds number, we can find out the shell side heat transfer factor is 0.008. Therefore, outside fluid film coefficient can be calculated as 851.7 watt per square meter per degree Celsius. We can plug in all the obtained parameters into the overall coefficient equation and obtain the overall coefficient as 463.87 watt per square meter per degree Celsius. For heat exchanger design, generally we use TEMA standard. TEMA stands for Tubular Exchange Manufacturing Association. Let's get familiar with a few important facts about TEMA standards in order to improve our heat exchanger design abilities.
Next, we need to check the results using Aspen simulation. Create a blank simulation in Aspen Plus. Enter the components of our system. So we enter methanol and water. Select the valid property method as NRTL. Then click next button and run the property analysis. Go to the simulation environment. Place a heat X block in the flow sheet and connect the hot and cold side material streams. Rename everything for easy identification. After completing the flow sheet, click next button and enter the cold water inlet stream data and methanol stream inlet data as the hot stream inlet. After the two input stream data are entered properly, click next and go to the heat X block setup. As we need to first check the shortcut method simulation results, select shortcut as the calculation method and select design as the calculation type. Enter the output specification as hot stream outlet temperature to be 40 degrees Celsius. Go to the overall heat transfer coefficient U methods tab and enter a constant heat transfer coefficient as 600 watt per square meter per degree Celsius. Before running the simulation, we need to adjust few data inputs for accurate simulation results. Go to block options in heat X block and change the property method for call side as steam tables. Because water is the only component in the call side. As methanol is initially at vapor state, Change the valid phases for hot stream as vapor liquid. 
Now we can run the simulation for shortcut method. So click next and run the simulation. Check the thermal results under the heat X block. We can observe that cold water outlet temperature is nearly 40 degrees Celsius and the results for heat transfer area and logarithmic mean temperature difference are almost close to the manual calculation results. Next, we need to check the detailed heat exchanger design method using Aspen simulation. Note that in order to determine the most suitable geometry for the heat exchanger in actual heat exchanger design, it is required to check the geometric design provided by the mechanical engineers. This checking is referred as heat exchanger rating. If we use manual calculations, we may have to spend a lot of time on multiple calculations with many new geometries of the heat exchangers in order to end up with the most suitable design. However, this task is very easy when we use a simulation program like Aspen Plus. Aspen provides a separate program called Aspen Exchanger Design and Rating, abbreviated as EDR in order to support this requirement. There are two methods to simulate heat exchanger geometry. First option is generating the design in EDR program and use the saved design file directly into Aspen Plus heat text block. The second option is working with EDR program directly within Aspen Plus simulation. In this example, we will see the first option. So let's open Aspen Plus EDR program. It is available in the list of install applications in your computer. So open Aspen Exchanger Design and Rating program. Click New and select Shell and Tube. Then click Create. In the EDR Navigator tab, expand the Input Program Definition tab. Click on Headings Remarks tab. For our design, we can enter the documentation details like company name, address, and date. Then go to Application Options tab. Since we need to check our manually created design in this simulation, change the calculation mode as Rating Checking option. Assign the location of hot fluid into shell. Change the geometry into SI units. Then change the calculation method as Standard method. Our application is Condensation of Methanol. Therefore, change hot side application as condensation and condenser type as normal. Change the cold side application as liquid, no phase change. After that, go to process data tab, name shell side fluid as process liquid and tube side fluid as cooling water.
Enter the mass flow rate of hot stream as 12,750 kg per hour and cold stream as 70 kg per second. Enter in and out temperatures accordingly. Enter the hot stream inlet vapor fraction as 1 and other vapor fractions as 0. Enter the inlet pressures as 1 atm and for the moment keep outlet pressure as default. Enter the heat exchange as 4344 kW. Select outlet temperature to be adjusted if over specified. Enter estimated pressure drop as 0.2 atm for both sides. Enter the falling resistances of methanol as 0.0002 square meter Kelvin per watt and water as 0.000333 square meter Kelvin per watt. Then go and expand the property data option and select hot stream compositions. Select the physical property package as Aspen properties. Then click on search data bank and type our component as methanol. Select methanol and add selected components. And select it into our list. Enter the composition of methanol as 1. Then click on property methods and change the property method to be NRTL. Then go to Hot Stream Properties tab and click on Get Properties icon. So that the all acquired properties are displayed. Then go to Cold Stream Compositions tab and again select the physical property package as Aspen Properties and click on search data banks and type water and select it into our list. Then enter the composition of water as 1 for the call side. Then go to property methods tab and select steam TA as the property method. Then go to call stream properties tab and click on get properties when all the acquired properties for water will be displayed. 
we can observe that again hot stream compositions is displayed as red. So go back to hot stream compositions and make sure that the hot stream composition is 1 for methanol. Then expand the exchange geometry tab and click on geometry summary. Enter the front head type as channel and removable cover and shell type as one pass shell. Rear head type as floating head with backing device. Let's keep exchange position as horizontal and enter the shell internal diameter as 895 millimeters. So the outer diameter will be displayed as 919 millimeters automatically. Then enter the number of tubes as 912 and length of one tube as 4.88 meters. Enter the outer diameter of a tube as 20 millimeters and enter the thickness as 2 millimeters. Enter the tube passes as 2. We can observe that the tube pitch is automatically selected as 25 millimeters. So we don't need to change that. And also let's keep the tube pattern as 30 degree triangular. Enter the baffle spacing as 179 millimeters and number of baffles as 5. The buffer type should be single segmental and our tube should be in the buffer window and enter the orientation as vertical and also enter the buffer cut percentage as 25. Then go to shell heads flanges tubes tab. We can observe that all the selected data have been filled in this sheet also. Then go to tubes tab and change the tube material as copper nickel alloy of 10% nickel. For the tube surface select use specified roughness for our selected material. We can observe all the data have been filled in other sheets. Then expand the construction specifications tab and select on materials of construction. We know that the designator for copper nickel alloy of 10% nickel is 26. So type designator at default exchanger material as 26. So we can observe that all the exchanger material change into our required copper nickel alloy. Then click on design specifications. We can observe that the design code used for the design of our heat exchanger is A semi code section 8. Select the service class as normal. TEMA class as chemical service. We can observe that design pressure and design temperature have been already selected by the program based on ASME code section 8. Keep all other tabs as default. We have specified all the geometry data for our heat exchanger design. Let's click on next and run the Aspen EDR program. We can observe that some suggested warnings have been created from the program. Reading these warnings will be helpful for further amendments of our design to obtain the most suitable design for our heat exchanger. Note that the program suggested that 
the number of baffles we have used is not enough and it will create some vibration problem with our heat exchanger. We can observe the results for the overall coefficients in the thermal hydraulic summary performance tab according to the shown results the results are closer to our manual calculations. However, the program suggested that there is a vibration problem and also heat exchanger required area is lesser than the actual required area. Therefore, to obtain a proper design, we may need to amend some geometry parameters of this heat exchanger. In that case, as chemical engineers, we need to get the help from mechanical engineers who actually decide the geometry for the heat exchanger. We can also observe that in manual calculations, we didn't consider any coefficient specifically for vapor phase and liquid phase. However, in the Aspen program, it actually calculates based on the different phases. This may be the reason for slight deviations of manual calculations in the simulation results. Also, we can observe this program generates all the information for our heat exchanger design, including the standard drawings of our heat exchanger parts. Also, we can observe that the costing can be performed for our heat exchanger design. If we know the pricing of our materials and capital cost, we can plug in those data into this program and find out the actual cost. That step can be used in the future design simulations. Now save this generated EDR file in a desired location. and go back to Aspen simulation which we previously created using the shortcut method. Go to heat text block setup and change the calculation mode into rating and change the model fidelity as shell and tube. 
Then convert to rigorous exchange window will be open. Select conversion method as specify exchange geometry and click on input EDR file and browse the EDR file which we saved in our desired location. Then click on convert. Aspen Plus asks us to change the input so click OK. Now our EDR design has been inserted into our Aspen simulation. Click next and run the simulation. We can observe that One warning is present. It says a possible vibration problem has been identified. As we previously observed in EDR program, the reason for this vibration problem should be the lesser number of baffles we use. Now we can observe that the overall results have been changed in Aspen simulation. Since our heat exchange area has been changed, the other parameters have been changed accordingly. However, we can observe that these simulation results are closer to our manual calculations. In order to obtain the best suitable design for our heat exchanger, we need to change geometry parameters again in the EDR program and find out the most suitable design. This step will be performed by mechanical engineers who designed the heat exchanger geometry. Therefore, as chemical engineers, be confident on how to check the geometric parameters for the heat exchanger design. Let's have a quick recap on the procedure of shell and tube heat exchanger design that we learned so far. The summary of what we learned in this lesson is Aspen Plus software can simulate detailed design of shell and tube heat exchangers. New heat exchanger designs as well as checking the suitability of an available heat exchanger geometry are possible using Aspen Plus software. Please watch our next video lesson about pinch analysis using Aspen software. Until we meet with our next lesson, have a nice day and goodbye.